Welcome back to as to basic fundamentals for the MiG-29. Today we'll be talking about TWS and TWS-2, but before we jump into that, let's take a peek at some of the corrections and clarifications I need to make from previous videos. Okay, so first up is the ILS deviation circle. In this previous video with the landing tutorial, I had stated that you always want to be aiming for the ILS deviation circle here in the middle. That is completely false. The objective is to always put the uh, navigation mark on your aircraft datum and use it to steer um, to the point where the um, ILS deviation circle um, merges with the navigation mark. Now, in a perfect world, that would always work. So this is going to be one of those times where we're going to use that wonderful Top Gun phrase where you're going to still have to do some of that pilot shit. Okay. Um, you have to understand where the relationships between the two are. The navigation mark is going to take you to the 90 degree turn point of the ILS deviation circle, right? So when the, the navigation mark is going to take you to a point where you have to make a very hard 90 degree turn um, to get onto the runway, right? So in a wrap up, what I'm going to say with this one is the objective between the two, obviously, is to merge them together as you see here in this picture. You want both of them directly over your aircraft datum. The objective is to steer in a way that the ILS uh, deviation circle is centered on the aircraft datum while flying the runway heading. Okay, that's the best way that I'm going to give you as far as um, covering this particular issue once again. Okay, hope that clears that up for you guys. So the next thing here that I wanted to touch on is in the first radar tutorial we discussed this A here in the A indicating that you had a target lock. Um, Jabon pointed out once again that uh, that was only 50% of the answer, and he's absolutely correct. Um, if you read in the comments below, he gives a really good definition on this video as to what this means. Oh, excuse me. Um, but I'm going to break it down real quick. So A indicates that, yes, you have a target lock, but you have a target lock on a hostile target. If you see this A replaced with um, AFR, okay, so Alpha Foxtrot Romeo, um, that indicates that you have a lock on a uh, friendly target. So this is really handy as, again, Jabon um, displayed in, in the comments below. Um, in the event that you're using a flood mode or bore sight or something of that nature, right? So you're using vertical scan, um, uh, bore scan, longitudinal axis, any of those, right? Um, where you're getting a real quick acquisition. So you're turning all of a sudden, boom, you got a target lock because there's a bird in front of you. You're gonna to wanna to pay real close attention to the symbology. If you see AFR, that means that yes, you have a target lock, but it's a friendly, right? If you see the A, by all means, let the weapon roll. All right, so I did wanna add that on because that was another very good point and extremely handy piece of information, especially in the multi-world environment. Uh, you know, you don't wanna be doing friendly fire, especially in servers where you can get kicked out for the first defense, right? I mean, which is warranted to, which is, warranted so i mean we should be checking our, our instrumentation before we release a weapon all right so i hope that clears that part up let's get to the next one okay and the final thing that i wanted to touch on um as a correction here was in the uh navigating waypoints tutorial um and this is these two have come up quite a few times so i'm going to touch on these ils bars one more time first there was some um misconception and belief that this um uh, course line works like it does in the F-15 in the aspect that its proportionate position is or relational position to the aircraft is based on your position to the course to the course line that's not the case these are strictly ILS indicators okay um, for navigating waypoints you can use the uh, ADI line here which will give you the deviation from your course line okay so in this case the course line is on the left side of the aircraft right we it's slightly banked and we display that here on the knee pad so first thing on these they are only ILS bars they only work with ILS now the second part that uh, flankertraining.com pointed out to me thank you very much flanker um, that I had not known was that these, the correct uh, definition for these or, or, or functionality for these is they only work with ILS equipped Russian runways, which um, I believe I did confirm with the Flanker or, or concur with Flanker um, that there are only about six of them in uh, the Caucasus map in DCS world. So these ILS bars only work with Russian ILS equipped runways. 
Okay. And that was the last of the corrections for today's got, um, video, guys. So uh, let's get back to the radar. All right, now that that's wrapped up, let's go ahead and get after the stuff we're here to talk about today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up our radar with the India key. Oh, excuse me. First thing I'm going to do is put us in BVR with the 2 key. Radar is active, as we can see here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit right alt in India. And you can see down here that we are now in... TWS, which stands for Track While Scan. The advantage of Track While Scan is it allows you to engage a target while monitoring others um, up until the point of release. And what I mean by that is once you're ready to actually launch on the on a target, um, you will go into single target track, um, in which case you'll lose the view of all the other aircraft until you return to Track While Scan. Okay, but there's a couple of really cool features that happen with the MiG-29. Um, so one of the things that we're going to see here in just a minute is the TDC will automatically lock a target um, once it reaches 85% of the currently selected scan distance. All right, so let's take a peek and see what that looks like here. So you can see our targets there showing up there at the top. Okay, so we're just coming into the scan range. Or I should say scan display, and there it is. Okay, so the currently, so what's currently happened here is that the first aircraft, lead aircraft, has reached 85% of the, excuse me, just realized I was almost about to make another correction video, not the scan range, it is 85% of the missile's maximum capability. Okay, so I want to say that one more time. I know that I just caught myself there. The, I'm going to pause here for a second because we just switched into a new, new thing here. The TD, the, in TWS mode, the TDC will automatically lock the lead target that has reached 85% of the currently selected missile's maximum firing range. Okay, so make sure that you guys have that. I apologize for if, if I confused you guys and, and threw everybody off and everyone's sitting there shaking going, what the hell did you just say? So TWS, TDC automatically locks 85% of currently selected missile's range. Okay, so um, with that being said, what's happened here is you can see that we have already gone into single target track. I did not tell it to do this. Now, here's why. What has happened now is that the missile or the target has reached the missile's optimum firing parameters. In about two seconds here, we're going to get our LA or launch authorization right here in the bottom of the HUD as soon as this arrow comes down below the R max line. Okay, so let's take a peek here. And there's our launch authorization and Fox 3. Missiles tracking well. These are obviously not maneuvering targets. And splash one. Okay. So that is TWS in a hand basket. I'll show you guys real quick. So we're going to unlock with the backspace. Come back around. I'm just going to move the TDC over the target. It's automatically acquired. It's gone into STT. Fox 3 again. Splash. Okay. Now, just to clarify... To demonstrate it, I showed you guys that the TWS would automatically switch into single target track. At any point, if you want to override that and you want to go into single target track before it automatically does, you can simply do that by pressing the enter key once you have something in your TDC. So you can still override and manually force a single target lock uh, with your enter key at any point that you choose. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into TWS2. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back at it here again. We've uh, reset here. I've got our targets approaching us dead on uh, bore here. And you can see that we're currently in TWS. You can see that the TWS has now picked up the uh, lead target. We're going to go ahead and cancel that. And we're going to switch into TWS2 by hitting right alt in India again. Okay, so now we can see TWS appear or TWS2 appear there in the bottom left. 
All right. Now, TWS-2 is only effective uh, really using the R-77 missile. And the reason being is the R-77 is the Russian counterpart to the uh, American uh, AMRAAM, the AIM-120C, or AIM-120, excuse me. Um, meaning that it is the um, Russian active uh, radar-guided missile. Remember, active radar-guided missiles are, ra are missiles that do not require any um, guidance from the launching aircraft once the missile has acquired the target or what we call going pit bull. Okay, semi-active radar missiles such as the uh, AIM-7, okay, um, require the um, host or launching aircraft to maintain lock up until the missile hits the target. Okay, so that's the advantage between the two, or uh, disadvantage between uh, semi-active and, and radar, act, or active, active radar guided missiles. Gosh, I can't speak tonight, I'm sorry. Um, so, TWS-2, only effective with the uh, R-77 missile. Okay, now what's going to happen here is we can see that the R-77 is selected. We can see we have two on the rails here. Um, you can see that the primary target has been designated already. We can see that the range is approaching the uh, uh, RMAX range, right? Now what we're going to be waiting for here is you're going to see a four-point crosshair now come up. Um, and I'll go ahead and unpause so we can see that. Identifying that a second target has been locked, and there it is. So you can see this four-point crosshair. I want to go ahead and turn that on. Identifying target two. Okay, so just like before, when the range hits our optimum launch range, you're going to see a switch into single target track. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, and you can see that the they moved off off to our right there, but you can see that the both identifiers are still there. All right. So we can see, let's pause this for a second. So you can get target one, launch authorization, and target two. If it just says target one, for example, if this T2 wasn't here, it means that only target one has acquired the launch authorization and the second missile isn't going to fire. Okay, now, for those of you who are familiar with the F-15C, when we bug targets in the F-15 um, and we go to engage them, we just or fox the missiles one by one. So fox one, target one, fox two, target two, etc. With the MiG-29, what we're going to do here when we unpause is we're going to hold the trigger button down until both missiles come off the rail. Okay, so you don't cycle it. It's not one fire one, fire two. You're just going to hold the trigger once until you see both missiles deploy. Okay, so here we go. And Fox 3. And there's both missiles gone. Okay, and you can see them both there. And there's one. And there's two. Okay. So pretty simple stuff once you uh, get the grasp of what we got going on. Okay. Um, just like with TWS, at any point, you can force single target lock by pressing the enter key. Okay. You don't have to switch back in TWS. Or, uh, or the scan mode, you can just go into single target track by um, pressing your enter key. Remember that the TDC, when in TWS on either modes, will automatically uh, lock the, or I should say bug, I'm not going to say lock, that's really bad verbiage. It's going to bug the lead target once it reaches 85% of the maximum firing range for the currently selected missile. Okay, but to fire at that point, you would have to use the launch authorization button. Okay, um, with TWS-2, remember you need to use the R-77 missile in order to um, uh, effectively take advantage of its of its options, as the R-77 is the only active radar-guided missile currently in DCS for the Russian um, uh, armament. Okay, um, I know I sort of garbled a few things here, guys. Uh, I hope it was pretty clear. Forgive me. I really wanted to get this video out before Christmas. With that being said, for those of you who celebrate, have a very, very Merry Christmas. I hope you guys have a great time with your loved ones. For those of you who don't, have a safe and um, enjoyable holiday. Hopefully, at least you have the day off and can enjoy that part of it. Go see a movie, uh, something to that effect. Hope it's a good time. Um, and I will do my best to catch you guys one more time before the new year. So with that being said, this is Overkill. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. See you next time.